Welcome back to Danny Rams. Today we're in a different setting. We're in Billboard the Nightclub. I thought it would be fitting when I'm talking to a bunch of Melbourne OG originals. Today next to me I've got Mickey Knox, I've got John Doe, and Adam Bibas, uh, one half of Orchestrated. We're here today to basically go down a trip down memory lane and talk about the old days that I would call them the most iconic days when it came to Melbourne, the genre, or Melbourne, the fucking clubbing scene or whatnot. Um, and sort of take a step back from, I'd say 2005, I reckon, mm -hmm. up to probably 2015, where all these boys were involved and we all played different roles. We are all involved in different venues and whatnot, but we were all in one entity and we were all kind of grew up and cut our teeth in the same scene. So first off, I'll kick it off with none other than Mr. Bites. Adam, how are you? Good, thanks, mate. So I wanted to try to talk to you a little bit about, like, I guess, where you started from, where you come up, because you're you're probably one of the original originals of us. Like, we kind of looked up to you when we were coming up. Mm -hmm. I know when I was 18 years old, I was bopping around, following you from club to club, and you're the one that got me into Electro. So how, what got you started when, in this scene? Oh, jeez. Um, what got me started in this scene was Dean was always... Um, Dean Paps, Dean Paps? Yeah, he was always a DJ at high school. And um, I went to uni with his... Uh, his girlfriend at the time and um in the, our first year of uni she uh, uh one of the girls had a birthday party for my school and she asked dean to play at her, at her birthday and he just randomly rang me up because i wasn't really friends with him in high school but he randomly rang me up he's like hey i, I know i know you like r&b music because i got my license midway through year 12 and i used to have like you know the subbies in the boot <laughs> and all that sort of shit and i used to pump like some ice cube or some shit on the way to school and like everyone would hear it sort of thing so and i'm like yeah well, you know i've got r&b I'll, I'll give it a crack you know just for a laugh and i remember playing that night had no idea what i was doing but um yeah fell in love with it straight away and um yeah that's how it started man and my story kind of starts with you um, i was working doing clubs and whatnot running events a little bit and then you were running TFU at the time with Colbeck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then myself and my business partner at the time, Kyle Han, got involved with you through Dirty Days. Yep, yep. And that's where I started. Dirty Dozen at the time. Dirty, Dirty Dozen it was back then. Yeah, yeah. And then I started my journey and then I went on to do Corova, Corova yeah. where these boys come along and then we were kind of aligned back again. So, <coughs> John, real name for him. Um, <laughs> how did you get started, bro? Um, one is actually, I remember uh, crossing paths with you quite a few times back in the original two Lotar, calls, yeah. yeah. The, the fucking goat. Yeah, and used to uh, be quite sober in that venue for uh, for a couple of years, and then, yeah, used to listen to Adam quite a bit, and, and, and Shardy as well. Shardy. And, yeah, just really, um, kind of always had the the like for that sort of style, which was, at the time, was very unique to- Niche too, yeah. Yeah, <coughs> to Melbourne. <coughs> and, um, yeah, life kind of was a bit funny at the time, and um, yeah, me and a mate of mine, um, back in those days, just started mucking around with with Ooh. Dex. Um, him and him. Yeah, him and him. I said it before. <laughs> when I had to redo the intro. <laughs> but who was the other him? Um, Haji, his name is. Oh, Haji. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we were mucking around on Dex for a little while and um, yeah, decided to give it a crack and yeah. Then I've got... Uh, <laughs> it's going in the background. <laughs> just yeah, me the whole time. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's how it kind of started. It wasn't, uh, wasn't natural. It was sort of um, stop-start. Yeah. I think I might have some... used to me. Who? Well, they came, this, this is the next part. So, yeah. Mickey uh, started with the minor. That's how I met him, but yeah, I'll let you tell yeah, the story. Yeah, yeah. yeah I remember um, I was always, I was DJing house parties and shit when I was like 16. And back then, we were talking about MySpace. Mm. I was um, I was trying to get into club gigs, mm. even when I was underage. So, I started following different pages on MySpace. Yeah, and yeah. found like Play School Thursdays and stuff like and that. And didn't you message him every week? Who's that? Is that what you said? I mean, why is it my figure if you or someone else? No, it wasn't me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but then what happened was, so just from <laughs> following those all that... those kind of accusations. <laughs> <laughs> just from following all that, and like having an older cousin who was going out, going to two floors and stuff like that, I sort of knew like T-Rex, Barter, Space, I knew those names. But then when I was going to MySpace, I'll never forget it, man. I found Danny D-Train. <laughs> D-Train, that's what you were my <laughs> yeah, 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 me too, right? And I found um, Kyle Han, and you were both linked to play school. And then I saw like he did stuff with billboards, and back then you were just running more so Events, random. Yeah. High school was right? cool, man. And cool. I went to school yeah. with Lamana, and <coughs> he, we had that common interest with like promotion and, and DJing and stuff like that. And I remember I contacted you directly on MySpace. I don't even know if you remember this. Nah. And we got a, we got chatting, and back then I was making bootlegs and that, like I wasn't full producing, and I had him on my MySpace music. That was the best. And you booked me for my first gig ever. One six one. Based on that, one six one for yep. a party called Examined. Yep, remember. And I played before this cunt, right? Did I play one six? Yeah. 
Yeah, but I was underage, I was like 17, 16. I was remember, was your mum down there? <clears throat> nah, my mom, uh, Bones dropped me off. Yeah, that's right. I went in, <laughs> and I, I versed that guy, Ziggeray. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> David Ziggeray. Ziggeray. <laughs> yeah. He was like huge on MySpace yeah, music, he's massive, doing yeah. bootlegs. So was I, he? I versed him, mopped him, <laughs> and then he played after me. And then uh, after that night, like, I, I sold tickets, but I was promoting heaps, sold heaps tickets, because I was still in high school, and he just wanted to come. And then from there, from there, Funny Farms Friday started. That was a TV Street Friday. Yeah, yeah, for like four weeks, I think it was. Yeah, we did two, three weeks, canned it, went to Corova Bar. But when we went to Corova, It still had another not, name. It was a smaller venue. Yeah, yeah, but, but not everyone had started yet. Like yeah. Heath, no, people are still going across to no, so, the two so, floors. No, it was actually it was separate. <laughs> there was actually an argument that happened. So we were working. It was about internationals. So around that time, and then we were doing the Fridays, and then we had sort of like a um, like a running. Like I had many arguments with those boys. Like I'm sure we all did at different points. Okay. And then we decided to move to Corova. And it was still funny for on Fridays for about three weeks, I reckon. Yeah, it was about And then we changed it to Corova nice. Fridays. And then, then what happened was, which is actually like the beginning of the story, was the boys, Fish and Miriam, were like, you can't have any of our people. So then I was like, well, fuck, what are we going to do? So we had to then start putting together lineups, and that's how everybody came in. So, like, we started, like, I knew you, we had Ports back in the day. Ports, oh, um, that's right. Yeah, there was, like, um, we should have said birthday. Oh, Nick Mascara was with you. <laughs> and what was the, um, uh, John Baptist? John yeah. Baptist come Baptist across. The Van GPK. Yeah. Van GPK. So all those boys come across with us, and they started playing with the Fridays, and that's when it sort of started. But and I remember when we first started, we had a six-week trial. Was that right? Yeah. And... We were starving off the bat. It was starving. And I remember I was playing like three, like always closed. And slowly, slowly, we'd have like five extra people a week, five extra people a week. It was going really slow. Yeah. And the mood is like, because we hit the six weeks, we didn't really pull the hard as we wanted to. But he's like, I reckon something's going to go on here. And we kept going a bit longer. And then... Yeah, it went back. It went absolutely spastic. And that, like you guys remember the early days too, like... You remember the early, early days when there was like 50 people in there and there was just heaps of drama and then it kind of blew up and there was a point where we were getting fines because the lines were so big out in front. Oh, that's great. And then you boys would come across and I remember those times like there's some stuff that I, I distinctly remember and one of those times was you and Heath. So when you and Heath Renata first started, <laughs> Heath Renata was another boy who come across and I remember there was a love-hate relationship. You guys fucking hated one another and it blossomed into a fucking long-term friendship. But I remember at the time everyone was downloading this, um, their tunes from... What was the forum called? Oh, yeah. fuck, I hate Heaps, bro. Oh, it was, yeah. And there was heaps of dramas, because people just still be shooting. Sure. Yeah, it was a competition. And it was like, Melbourne, man, who can suss the best tunes? Yeah, who can yeah. suss the best tunes? But I feel like Corona, and I was thinking that as I was driving in, I think at some point, that was like back then, who had the hardest tune? But you were hey. 9.5 out of 10 times the winner <laughs> in that competition. <laughs> you know, field? Oh. Which one is that? Oh, oh, you were texting when you were summer oh, days, oh, and you were like yeah. listening to and a someone was like, "I need this song. Yeah, well, I need Pretty. it." Yeah, Pretty. Someone found it. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I thought it was it was just fucking nah. dropped. Yeah. Oh, that was, do you remember that? Do you remember that all of us at at that event oh. when that kicked in like that? You and I, we started pulling, oh, I remember it well. pulling grass out. Oh. <laughs> but no, it was it was oh. like I remember then Dude. it was kind of like a, a competition almost. And that's probably why some of these little tussles were... I remember, the, the one I remember, I can't remember the song exactly. I, I reckon it was like, I can't, you'd probably remember. <clears throat> but you had it and you were playing it. And back then you'd remember, like everyone does. Like if you had a certain tune that was going off, you started you getting... It. You got a better yeah, set time. Yeah. Yeah. You got a better yeah. set time yeah. because you had that song and that song was going nuts. And then if someone got that tune, it was an all out war. Could have been, I reckon it could have been Daniel Steinberg, that feeler, whatever it was. Yeah, and especially if someone's playing early before you, they, dump it, they dump it upstairs, you're playing downstairs, and you're dirty. Yeah, yeah. I like to be. Huh? I like to be. I like to be, and there's the other one was oh, pay for me. Pay for wasn't me, yeah. 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 But I think the tune they were fighting over, and I might be wrong, but correct me, I think it was actually Blink, John Dalbach. Nah, I reckon it was a remix Back of. Uh, I reckon it was a remix of uh, Screams in a Night, actually. Oh. No, no, you're joking. <laughs> yeah. so I remember that, and then I remember out the front and having to break, break you and him up because you were physically going to fucking punch on. Yeah, maybe, I remember that. Maybe yeah. it was yeah. square sore. 
Oh, I reckon it was, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those are a few, mate. Those are a few. Uh, yeah. Uh. But I remember you two, and I was literally like, I'm going to break you up because you're going to punch on over a song. And that's something I don't reckon people would know that used to happen. But I remember even talking to Piero. This is a fucking another throwback. But he Piero. used to tell me, okay. he used to buy five of the records as they used to come into like rhythm and soul mm-hmm. and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. he would buy all the records Dude. so that no one could get them for three months because he used to take that one to come in internationally. <laughs> and so then he would get booked for the mad gigs because he had the tunes. Dude. But that's something that was like, I guess, unique to what happened. But I think we, I, I reckon we'll all agree on this, but that's sort of what started this whole, you know, Melbourne sound fucking era was people started, stop, they got sick of fighting and you were a part of this too. Um, where they got sick of fighting over the tunes because at the end of the day you could find them. And then over time, people started making their own remixes, making their own shit stuff 100%. because they wanted to stand out because it did make a difference back then. Like the tunes and the catalog you had yeah. was what time you played on the gigs, right? Mm-hmm. And then uh, there was from us, you guys obviously did beach ball. Mm-hmm. And then Heath did a, a fuck, what was it called? Um, Carnival. Carnival Crowbar, man. I was just on YouTube the other day, I was like, this is disgusting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> People used to get a mental before that, like. Dude. Like, oh, oh, what, a, what a place that was. <laughs> was upstairs. What, Burke Street? Yeah. Dude, yeah, and Crowbar too. Nah, Crowbar too, like, I was just, it, it was funny because. Was that when you said, fuck? Like, it's weird, because for me, Vadim, like, I know, like, went to Waratah, went to Burke Street a little bit, but because. Did you just come to Waratah? Yeah, I only went once or twice. Oh, he was at work. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that was the best. That was the best by far. Like, I can't beat that joint. Well, yeah, we should talk about that quickly. So, Waratah, so the original TV was actually at Waratah Place, which is why I'm now Storyville. So, that was OG, and that was like when Electro sort of got introduced. And the guys that were playing then were like Nick Coleman, Shardy, Nick Corvo, uh, fucking Boogs was playing. Filthy. T-Rex. Fil- filthy, yeah, Filthy, T Rex. And they were the guys who started playing Electro. He tran, and they. They bite us, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there was like, um, that were the first guys to start playing Letcher. And that was when it went from like house into back then. They listened to that stuff that yeah. we were listening to. And like, remember like um, Candy Girl and shit, Quesh. Yeah. And then we oh, thought, yeah. I thought that was like a banger. Like, talk I thought about, that was heavy. Talk about having songs that you claim. Shardy used to jump on at 6 a.m. at Waratah. And he had that smoke on water remix. You know, they switched the Oh, DJ switched it. Yeah, yeah. He switched the vibe. Dude. He used yeah. to go yeah. off, bum, man. Bum, and that was like his his song that he claimed sort of thing. But that was the thing though, like I remember it, when I first started like following you around, it was um, uh, fucking Eric Pride's, that Gundalay, what's that? Um, a Big Patchy. Uh, a Big Patchy, yeah. Switch. And I would literally follow you from like all these random clubs just so you, I could hear you play a Big Patchy. <laughs> yeah, good tune, man. I did it the other day. Crazy. I don't like the Eric Pride's remix, it's shit house. Stop it. It's the worst. <laughs> the original's the best fucking... <laughs> that's it, that's it. Switch. Dumb the man, dumb the man. Dumb the man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. man. Switch was the man. Yeah, yeah Eric Pride sucked that remix hard. So he did that, and the other thing with Corova 2 was like back in its peak. Um, Waratah, again, I'm saying, like, that was the go-to, most go-to joint that I ever went to. And then after, <coughs> obviously, everyone had their sort of time. But Corova, the vibe upstairs, that room that was only having 50 people, but legitimately had fucking 300 people crammed in there. And everyone would be screaming, banging the wall, and you could hear like the sound over the top of it. That's some of, in my opinion, the best days of my life. I, I don't even remember, remember it, man. I wasn't allowed well, to play Well, because you weren't allowed to play there. Yeah. That's exactly right. Because that was the politics that we had back then. Yeah. This is wild. People yeah. on that, that ledge that was like the right up against side. the wall next to the yeah. window. Mm-hmm. And made people like standing over you as you're in the booth. Like, that was fucking... I, it was crazy. like the original boiler room. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, absolutely. But funny, funny back then, because I don't know if you were allowed to smoke or not, but everyone was punking, punching darts at flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, smoking was banned when I was playing at Famous. So that was like 2000 and... Well, that was the first time I saw you play. Yeah? Because it's funny, like on MySpace, I saw you playing around all the time. Yeah, yeah. I never went to T Fuel and that yeah, just yeah. yet. I actually yeah. went to Famous first. Yeah. You're a bit scared you ain't going to T Fuel first time. Yeah, yeah, but I remember, well, I went, I went a couple of times to Waratah and that, but I remember when I walked in the Famous, you were playing um, I've Got the Power remix. Oh, yeah. Goes for like seven minutes. Snap, yeah? Yeah, it's a fucking bomb when it Yeah, drops. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Who the fuck's this cunt, man? <laughs> and I look up and it was you. And that's when they used to open the fishbowl underneath, and Corbo used to play in the fishbowl at Famous. Oh, underneath, that was up top. Yeah, the bottom. Nah, 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 nah. I was in the main, that. I'm pretty sure. I was in the main, main, main yeah, yeah, but main room, room. then the fishbowl was underneath. Yeah. No, it was upstairs. No, it wasn't. I used to play upstairs. I've got a residency. Oh, hold on. Yeah, I forgot what you're talking about. Yeah, it was yeah, me, Sly Foe, and Monty Miguel. Oh, no shit, really? Upstairs, bro. It was only last like six, seven weeks. Do you know I played disco shit before Fuzzy Hair dropped on the song? Mm. The song before? <laughs> bro, you just, you just undid yourself. I was talking about that with Sean Roll. Oh, you go, shit. A friend that we won't name, we're talking about how you played uh, the cat before Fuzzy oh, Hair dropped on. Oh, man. <laughs> but, and they just told everybody who it was. Oh, Fuzzy Hair, it was a full off the boat Italian, yeah? <laughs> talking to me and shit, yeah? And I was just like, dude, I didn't even Jerry until I went downstairs into the into the VIP room and I sat down and I was just like, 
What did I just Or after? Do? Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize at the time. <laughs> That's yeah, this was, this was like big. Co- everyone was talking about. But the story too. was. Did he say the story. No, no. The story was. I was yeah, mixing yeah. out my last tune and CDs back then. Yeah, and it stopped on me. Right, with thirty seconds left in the year. So I hit the next tune, and it just happened to be that. Didn't Jerry until I got underneath? He didn't say anything. This guy shit was better anyway. Yeah. 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 Funnily, you say that because four weeks later he messaged me on MySpace and asked me for a copy. Fucking dog. <laughs> CDs as well. So we had the Corona yeah. time and era, and that was like, there's fucking plenty of stories. If you guys have any stories, you can jump in. But my memory was like, it was different. Obviously, we didn't have Facebook and shit, so there's no videos going around and whatnot. And there was a lot of blues, obviously. Like, sometimes the promoters and the DJs were like involved with it. I remember someone shouting on the train line. I won't mention who. <laughs> <laughs> 20 bucks. 20 bucks. I won't mention who. You hang out for the Beat magazine the week after so you can see the, the photos. photos. Yeah, 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 that was the best. <laughs> and if you made them, you're like, you're like local. Lo- uh, I've got team. all the old shit from Beat magazines. Oh, home. right, 100%. I got I messaged Danny about a week ago. I was cleaning up my studio and yeah. I found every old artist onion I had. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I've got heaps of them. Some of those, strawberry, so fucking, I. all the Made in Melbourne's, all the billboard events. Crazy. You gotta keep that shit. Yeah, I've got them all in like a box and it's got like tickets. I've got, match, I've got I've matches got, from Hobby Tons. I've got all my tickets, man. I've got print, all of them. I yeah, printed all, 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 all my old, like when my name was on posters, I printed them all out as photos and put yeah. them in like a photo album. That's mad. That's mad. That's That'd be a big fucking photo album. Yeah, how big is it? Like It's pretty big. Yeah, I kept all that shit. It's gonna go on my kids' bill. Like my first, my first Revis gig, I got like that and shit. I reckon I would have been there that first game. Yeah, well, that was a good day. Go, going back into other venues, we've obviously got TFU. <clears throat> Their story kind of goes from there. We go back, we patch up with TFU. We start doing some crazy internationals, which I want to go into too. Ooh. We all rekindle, and then the two scenes combine. So that's when the Karoba boys are like time. two years. The, Saturday yeah. nights, or just yeah. you, get, you get there at 10, the moment would be fucking around the corner. Oh, what a time. It, it was, it was epic. And that was on, when, what was it? You, you remember what was the venue called beforehand? Uh, Old China Bar or something like that. Uh, no. It was actually originally called the Whiskey, the whiskey Bar. bar. The whiskey the bar. Yeah. I used to go there yeah. on Friday nights. Yeah. The Whiskey Bar. How funny is that? The Greek Sunday. Yeah. When I was 18. So, yeah. What was it called? Was it, am I right in saying it's China Bar or something like that? China Bar? No. Someone no, said it was no, like, no, 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 no. So it was Whiskey Bar before and then it was TFU. Whiskey Bar, yeah. All I remember is like going in there and it was like fancy. And then the boys did the complete opposite of that. Like they literally had sledgehammers and just smashed the joint up oh. to make it look grungy as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. And that was when it got proper epic. Like before that, when yeah. it was. Well, remember when it was at. Um, Rare, what was it called? Zest. Then? Yeah, that, um, I don't want to throw mud, but the that's what fucking yeah, sucked hard out of it. I do a good fucking steak. I do a good yeah. steak. Yeah, yeah, Zach worked. I right. hate it going Hello, there. Hello, Zach Loose, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> bah, there he is. So I, would, I used to go there and that was like, that was, I reckon that was the lowest part of TV's history. I met Sammy Sessions there, that was fun. Was that that was how good was the back door? The alcohol license. This was shit. How good was the back door? Yeah, they copped the massive fine. Fucking best. <laughs> the back door was the best. The huh? best. Yeah, oh, in that alleyway. Just to avoid that, that hectic shit at the front, it was just the best. <laughs> yeah, it was, I loved it. It was so convenient. <laughs> it was funny, I was down that lane way not long ago and it's a fucking spin out. Dude, well, I don't even know that. Imagine all the times we had in, those, in that lane, my art, like after the after the nights oh. and shit. Yeah, that guy walk out, oh, he would be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because the night itself was always amazing. Yeah, right? of course. And especially we loved, we enjoyed DJing, socialising, so and getting fucking loose. But for me personally, I loved uh, afterwards. Yeah. But even during the night, the smokers and in the office. Yeah, it was epic shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the stairwell there were things right. going on in that stairwell and, 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 and in the office. That stairwell was the place to be. If you were oh, VIP, yeah. that's what you I, had. I remember we'd be in there and there was fucking, there was more people in the stairwell than there was inside. It was fucking, it was nuts. There was, yeah, lucky there was no cameras in there, I'll put it that way. But there was, no. yeah, the stairwell was definitely iconic. Oh, there was cameras, wasn't there? Mm-mm. In the stairwell? No. Dude, there's no way. No, there was, no, there was, no, there was the, the very top of it. The very nah. top of it. No, no, sure? it didn't, probably no. the door as you fucking as you walk out. Oh, okay. Did that place we got shut a lot quicker? Hey, do you remember the, <laughs> <laughs> do you remember the, do you remember the cockroaches? Oh, oh bro. Oh, okay. I never forget. Another thing too, I used to enjoy was the guy who used to do the door. Cambridge name. Oh, which one? It was heaps of things. Nah, I think it was Mick. Anyway, I can't remember shit. The next day, well, we'll there, but the next day it was the morning, and who was the big Maori guy? Offa. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He was from Werribee. <laughs> I think, I think you may have passed away. No. No way. Oh, no, not him then. Maybe I'm wrong. No, that's yeah. Henry. Oh, okay. There was another, there was, in the OJ, OG one, Waratah, there was, I can't remember, Simon? Simon Baker, yeah. 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 And then Moody. there was, yeah, Moody. Moody, yeah. So Moody, Moody passed away. No, no, no. no, 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 no. He used to <laughs> do the door. He used to do, do the door. Do you know that dude that died having the operation in Dubai? He used to manage joints. It was funny, Dean and I played Argentina where to stop over in Dubai and we saw him there. Ben Harrison, is it not? Oh, I can't remember his name. Yeah, yeah. Ben Harrison, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then all of a sudden, he was, he was getting an operation on his shoulder or something, yeah? 
and something happened nah, in different story. Nah, not Ben Harrison. He nah. something happened in his operation and he died. I, I can't remember who it was. That's fucking bad luck. Yeah, it was shit ass. No, Where you going, bro? Slash. That's alright. Ah, no wood. Yeah. Oh shit. Have a slash. I think I think it was Grover as well. Well, I'm gonna wait to come back to that. Yeah, so it was um, Simon Baker, the older original one, and there was another Moldy dude there. But like over the time, there was heaps of different dog guys. There wasn't really unique. Marcus was one. was one of the Marcus. Who was the what was that guy? He was a. I'm pretty sure he uh, ended up going to Cuba or was doing Cuba at the same time. <laughs> Do you remember? Was so tall, good-looking fella. <laughs> I don't remember. There was there, there was so many of them there. On like, that which top, venue are we talking now? Uh, fucking every venue. But yeah. now at Warata, um, there was Moody who ended up owning Karuba. Karuba, Karuba. And um, so a country. When I, before I went to Korea, he fucking hated me. He threw me out the Comedians. stairs. Yeah, he slapped me. <coughs> he was <coughs> like, he used to absolutely like, I don't know, I was just a pain in his ass because I was just fucked up all the time. And then when I went up there and like knocked on the door, I remember, because I literally like, that's again, like, you couldn't go like message a page or call a number. Yeah. I was like knocked on the door, Korea, he answered, and I just remember looking at him, I was like, this is not going to go down well. But he came through, and then obviously we fucking ran Korea, but yeah, man, there was some good stuff back in the day. No, and that was, no, Noel's the un, un, undisputed best doorman in the world. Yeah, he was unreal. Who? Noel's no. doorman, he was a like, Korea guy. He was there for like oh, the yeah. entire, entire entirety of the venue. Kick and, Rocky was another one. And I reckon he could fuck yeah. up too. Kick Rocky was there. <laughs> Kick is there. Hey, I watched Jason Colbert. Kick Rocky. Yeah. He yeah. sells protein now, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, yeah. Fine, bro. yeah. <laughs> you know he also sells protein? The guy that did that mesomorph, mesomorph thing. Does he? <laughs> yeah. What's mesomorph? <laughs> Orchestra <laughs> remember? No? There's a morph, that video, that guy that made a that mic caller. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually sells the shit that he was promoting in that video. That's crazy. Have you had it? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> I wish you remember, we, 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 we um, <coughs> got, him to, the, got okay. him to come to the 10 year party. Yeah, I do, I remember, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's iconic, bro. I used that video recently in a promo. Like, I actually had that video back in it. Um, going back in the day. actually a legend, mind you. Nice. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah. Is there is there some iconic? Like I've got one. Maybe I'll start it. I reckon it'll probably end up being at War Bowers. But one of my most iconic moments at TFU, like that one on Burke Street, was Phil Kieran. I was gonna say, I knew you yeah. Gonna say yeah. So Phil Kieran, like oh, I remember when we did that show. And I reckon it was <laughs> not the first international, but it was one of like the first in the string. And I remember it was like I think I'm a monster Skyhawk, and there yeah. was a bunch of other tunes at the time, and they were like they couldn't have been bigger, like they were the yeah, biggest. The floor tunes. almost caved in, bro. Yeah, yeah. But, and I remember they would. I don't know. I reckon there was fucking 200 people up there. It was like you could oh. not move, and I reckon we would have been sitting there too. But we're all sitting like pushed up against the wall, and he was playing in front of us. And I just remember the crowd when that guy like. I'm getting goose pimples singing that, bro. And the fucking you could feel the whole room vibrating. I literally thought it was gonna collapse. You know, and it's all. It was moving, mate. It was and then he stuck around and got absolutely off. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I got yeah. a photo with him. Right. I, I remember he was like, it was like meeting Jazul, you know. He was fucking. He wasn't the first in that. So the first one we did was Audio Jack. No, you did Audio Jack, Zoo Zoo Brazil. Brazil, Daniel Steinberg. Yeah, which yeah, is Steinberg. Daniel Steinberg. Steinberg with Dead Mouse. Dead Mouse was yeah, 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 no, yeah. separate. It was separate. No, no, no same party. Daniel man. Steinberg was Star. Daniel Steinberg and Dead Mouse was same party. I'm telling you right Daniel now. Daniel Steinberg had mad tunes and yeah. they were like a part of Kroger and TFU. But no one knew him. While I was getting downstairs up. bumping yeah. at the same time. But, but the thing is, yeah, there's no social media for people to know. See, this is the reason why I put so many orchestrated samples in my in our tunes because it was the only way that you could let people know, hey. This is my tune. Yeah, this it's, is it's, our it's tune. It's like a hip hop tag, man. You know what I mean? Like, because there wasn't social media. Like, yeah, it's not yeah. as easy. You couldn't tag easy. and reshare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%, 100%. Yeah. Is there any other iconic ones about Phil Kieran that you guys can remember? Oh, obviously, oh. Dirty, like Dirty Dozens back in the day. Yeah. I remember Dirty one dozen. again at the Waratah where it was like, um, this is six old group, like when that came oh. out. I remember just everyone getting up on the table the and there was no rules back then. It wasn't called no rules management, wasn't it? No, it was not, uh, no management. No, no management, management, yeah. And the joint legit felt like it had no fucking management. We ran a party called No Organisation because we just did it on spur of the moment on the night and it killed it. <laughs> well, we're all the same. We should run parties called cunts parties. They yeah. book only female DJs. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you can't do that anymore. No way, man. You know, oh, and geez. the flyer would be like an old school Aussie bloke. Old school flyers were sick. With like a... Uh, Red moustache looking at a Sheila. <laughs> I got, I got, I got, I got Floyd. I got the photos. I remember and we book like Katie Drover Sunshine. <laughs> we just book all these Sheila. Katie Drover. I remember the, week, the, weekly, Drover. Fucking, the weekly flyers She's trying decent, to get them right. Yeah, more and more offensive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. I remember some of them fucking being. <laughs> remember Sarah Especially Tone? when we went to fucking Lonsdale Street, they got real bad. Let's go by. Yeah, yeah. He's not pushing bad. Hey, do you remember Sarah Tone? Bad ones. Yeah. She. She. Yeah. She went and got massive over in and shit, didn't she? Nah. Didn't she? No. She ended up having a baby. She lived in Geelong, I think. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that's, a, that's a big <laughs> fucking difference. <laughs> Geelong's a contrast, yeah. Fuck. 
And yeah. so at that peak of Berkshire, we saw that it was like obviously you boys. Uh, he was sort of on and off, but he wasn't like a regular. Hey, but I just played I think seventeen times a night. <laughs> yeah. did you, you took up most of the sets, yeah. I did two, two, <laughs> two to three upstairs by myself. Then Dean would jump on with me, do orchestrated from three to five. Yeah. And then I'd go straight downstairs and do fucking five to seven. Yeah, I remember. Uh, one of the most for me. But that's when you guys would like jump on with me as well. Yeah, it was the best. It was the best. It was like a community yeah. like back there. Yeah, like, like, jump on with me. No, we always used to fucking, if someone like, always. W- wouldn't come at like a, yeah, you know, yeah, being always, That's what you boys did, whatever, just we'll chill in for like 15 minutes. And help out. But I remember whatever. like at 4 o'clock in the morning before you guys playing downstairs, you know, like everyone was just having a mix. Wait, like, what, yeah, what time it, did it, you guys play again? I can't remember. I used to play, for, I used to play after you every week upstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah at five. Yeah, but did, did Paps play for an extra little bit as well? Sometimes. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. But that's what the time thing. did you play? I used to play before Yous would play upstairs, but downstairs. And sometimes I'll play before Yous. Upstairs. It just, just used to, yeah, it used yeah, to yeah, change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I but love downstairs. Downstairs yeah. when it was like yeah. nice and dark, cool. you get the fucking right. weirdos in the corner just fucking yeah. wigging out. And it was mad because behind the DJ booth downstairs was that. Was the vault? That the little room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it actually wasn't that little. What was that? <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. remember how we used to all, we all signed the back wall and every, every DJ yeah, yeah. that wall was iconic. And yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. I, I can still yeah. see those photos of you guys standing there, or everyone standing there with their, their yeah. the tags in the back. Man, I remember there was other guys that played there too, like Nick Coleman. Obviously, he used to play downstairs all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. He was Travis fucking, as well. Yeah, Charles. Yeah. And Nick was one of the best players, wasn't he? Ryan Ryback. Ryan Ryback. Yeah. He was a top bloke, bro. Ryback. Top yeah. producer. Yeah. Too. South African. Top producer. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember as well. Not only did we reverse all the time. But the truth of the matter was, half, me and Kadim didn't play half our sets. Yeah. Because we'd be passed out in the stairwell. Passed out yeah. <laughs> Or we'd pass out on the decks. So then like Laskus would jump on, or if fucking, even Ryan Rimback would jump in, Chubbs would jump in, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a disaster. Yeah, it actually was. There was, was no, <laughs> there, <laughs> there was, like, we had set times, but there was no official anything in that place. I'll never forget, always after my set upstairs, when you would jump on, you, you'd start with something fucking hectic, right? And I'd just be like, and the crowd would get ballistic, and I'd just like try and duck and get the fuck out of there as quickly as I could. But you remember? Yeah. What, what was that song that you made that, that was massive at the start? Like Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Oh yeah, yeah. Frankenstein. Yeah. Yeah. Bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I remember, remember the girls used to love him. Do you remember? Yeah. He had this dirty, <laughs> this dirty <laughs> rustic look, you know what I mean? He's like, the same rustic look. Yeah. And the, I, the girls I, loved him. I remember, I remember yeah. when you used to play Karoba and it will be like fucking that three to five set and you get up and you start, you start scratching with your Yeah, you start smashing shit. You start smashing shit. No, you would fucking like get up on the necks and just start like yeah. the wheel and then licking, licking the fucking wheel. And start wheel. throwing shit and all the time. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, head banging. Oh, I remember with Moody, right? Like, I love Moody. Oh, bro, how many decks did you guys yeah, He loved me too, but... By the time we left that joint, I probably owed him 10 grand. Oh, man, and I'll he's tell you angry. Like, every week, I blew the mixer, the fader knobs were gone, but then one week, he used to pull me up every week, so I used to pay him a retainer a little bit. <laughs> and then I remember once, I, I don't know what I was doing, bro, and the subwoofer cone caught fire upstairs. <laughs> Like it went up, mate. It started smoking and everything. I'm surprised, I'm surprised and, and he fucking like, he pulled me in that office with Brandon and he fucking went to town on me, mate. Yeah, those decks are always. But like, I told him I'm real, I'm like, relaxed, bro. He's I'm like, what are they doing here. with the knobs? He's like, every fucking week, there's no knobs on this thing. Used to lose it. I was flicking you with the with the mixer at two floors. The worst was T Rex. What do you mean? Like with the equipment. If right. something wasn't working, yeah, it was catastrophe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then like playing after him or before him. He'd jump on, he'd start tweaking everything to fix it as if like everything we were doing was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It was fucking sick. I used to hate it when, when like randomly the subbies wouldn't work, remember? And he just erect, erect, erect the fucking the night every time. Yeah, well, it kills the momentum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember. Like, you've got no subs in a club. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, funny, man. Oh, 100%. And that, sub, that system was mad, dude. No, we had no sound restrictions as well. I don't know. No, but no, there was. was remember, there was cranking. Remember, it used to vibrate and there was, there was sounds. Dude, the walls were You sweat. could hear outside. So, like, when you go outside for hey, a job, you know my fan, you my industrial fan in the booth, that's proper. Oh, that <laughs> massive thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that thing used to blow people over if you were afraid. Take you Burke Street, if there was a fucking thermostat, it would have cranked 75 Oh, yeah, what about Celsius? Man, the condensation off the walls. Yeah, it's sweat. If it's a cold night, 
inside was literally water all over the walls. I remember that, and that was the same as at Corova too. <coughs> People would pass out to give them bottles of water, and just, it was we, like a mosh pit. We had to get the Pass massive out. fan in front of the, the amps, remember? Yeah, yeah. In the office, yeah, so yeah, yeah it pulls it down there. Yeah. yeah, fish used to be the loser. Turn the fan over to make sure they're all right. Bro. That's right, because it used to be fucking hot in there, man. Oh, it was hot in there. It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting very hot in there. You know what I mean? Always. I can remember I'd be sitting in there at about, you know, fucking 5, 6 a.m. And then all of a sudden you just hear the youth two coming in the back. <laughs> Snuggling us banging on the door. Hey! Oh, mate, down. we used to kick that door down. <laughs> that door. I remember one of the best ones I had at TFU, I'll never forget, right? Dean Paps, shout out. Absolute legend, gentleman. And, but he never used to party that much, right? No, no, no. But... It's funny, he was always still the best company, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember one night, he had a couple of drinks. Yeah. So it's a bit looser, you know what I mean? And you don't really see that often. And I'll never forget, as Adam just said, he used to start for an hour on his own. Yeah. And I remember he opened with, and it was one of my favourite or- orchestrated tracks, the Dodge Morse remix. Oh, yeah, Dodge Morse. Drink a little wine and cocktail. Yeah. Dum, bum, dum, bum, yeah. Dum, bum, dum, bum, dum. And you played a, I think it was a Blau, Mal, Blau Mulch, where oh. it was, I think you played yeah, the yeah, trumpet. Yeah, you did something with an acapella, right? Yeah, yeah. And I remember, and I was watching, because I was always used to go yell at you, right? Yeah, and I remember. And I'm yelling at you. Dean Paps comes up to the booth going, that's what I'm fucking talking about, Adam. That's what I'm fucking talking about. <laughs> but for Dean Paps, that was... Oh, like, yeah, I don't remember yeah. that. Oh, I'll never forget it, man. It made my whole dog. I can remember him getting a bit loose before he, he started his set, and I'd be DJing, I'd be looking at my watch, and it'd be like 3.05, 3. and I'm like, where the fuck's Dean? And I'd be looking around, and I was seeing him at the bar, and he's got like a Jager bomb in his hand, he's giving me the fucking, the cheese. I'm like, hey, the fuck up, get here. He's the best, bro. He's the I like, never forget, he used, to, he used to do a mix, right? <laughs> Stranger to Stability, Len yeah, Frankie Remix, yeah. into Mr. Pink. Yeah, I remember. And he used to nail that. He nailed it every right? time, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. It was uh, Dubfire. Was that Spastic? Spastic, Spastic, Spastic right? yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> sorry, I got sidetracked. But going back to Len Fanky, right? Obviously one of the greatest tunes ever made. Yeah. Still iconic. But the original is like nine minutes. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Paps used to drop it every week, right? And I remember he dropped it. I went up to him. I go, bro, you mixed out of that pretty quick. I said, is this an edit? <laughs> He goes, uh, yeah, I think uh, Len got a bit carried away then. <laughs> <laughs> so he done an edit and came down to four minutes thirty. You know what I mean? So deep. So he could play quicker. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd be carried away then. Dude, we, we think it's four and a half minutes. <laughs> four I'm fucking half, dying, bro. Four and a half minutes now, people would argue that he's getting carried away. Like, too long, yeah. yeah, people like back then, people would play songs for seven minutes. You yeah, hear three yeah, drops, yeah. yeah, like, and things have changed. I, I remember one time Nick Coleman going downstairs. And he would play nine minute songs. Mm. So yeah. you'd, you'd be oh, at yeah. the bar and having a chat with you. He would go out into the crowd and dance with them. He used to do uh, it. Phil Kira dancing bears. Oh, tune. Mm. He used to go dunk, dunk, dunk. And he used to go out there and dance like a tin. I remember literally watching him dance. I'm like, who's DJing? He's like, me. So he'd be out there by himself dancing downstairs and then he'd go up and mix. Yeah, that's what's good about him. But they, they, like, the thing is, the changes now, and I know like we're, not all of you play, don't play much anymore these days. Um, but you boys still do. Like, what are the changes that you're saying? Especially, oh, you, like, man, it, 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 look, the scene has the scene now is to put a bloody it's just fucked. It's shit. You know what I mean? Like, dude, I played a set the other week where I played 138 BPM, me, and I hated it the whole time. Yeah, that's wild for you. Exactly. So, like, their attention spans are short. They mm-hmm. want it's just cheese. Like, it's just hard to explain. But look, don't get me wrong. Might still do well, but yeah, it's, the scene's totally different. And the community part's gone. Like, that's the thing. Like, when we were going up, like, obviously we were all. Like, Techno's out. taken over as, like, the underground sound now, you know what I mean? Yeah. Is um, it underground, though? It's not. I'll yeah, say it's it right now. Well, what's yeah. it like? I'm more, look, for me, it's interesting because, like, the way we used to promote nights, like, all ticket sales and stuff would be, like, people. F- people you know. Yeah, yeah, honey. Like, you know, we're putting, like, maybe. Physical ticket sales. Yeah, correct. Also, like, go to the car park and fucking <coughs> sell tickets for Ah, uh, Dorcas Street was. <laughs> Hot and heavy there. Humming. Uh, <laughs> it was humming. Hello, Zach Lewis. What's it? It was humming in there, mate. But it's like it's back then. It was like you know you'd advertise everything. Like even when we started, you were talking about MySpace before. Yeah, we started posters on the walls because. It's well, put it this way, right? Every dirty day. Yeah, legit. Like you don't feel cure in six weeks' time. Like yeah, on the flyers, yeah. you walk out. Well, every dirty days, we meet with him. Got into the promotion side of Burke Street. Yeah. Fish would print 500 tickets, 600 tickets. Yeah. Me and Bidim would split them. Yeah. 300 yeah. apiece. We did the same thing. And we had 100 time. comps, right? So what we'd do is we'd, we'd puff, like, we'd pass them on to a few promoters, but we would literally hand and fist, physical, I used to live in Greenville back then, I'd be at fucking the chicken shop, 
and Skyway's pub in Airport West pumping out dirty. <laughs> Same. Hey, right. I used to think, man, that was out. I was a big guy. I was just so comps. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I want to get into that. I want to get into that. And that's the thing, right? But come, come a week before the event, we'd go see Fish and hand him 15 lacquer. Mm. Yeah. Sold out. Done. Yeah. And then on the door, we I used just... to get half of that. I was mad. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the. Uh, Dude, what I remember, me and him started pumping comps towards them, or, you know, shit was getting a bit shady. So we'd, we'd, we'd print 150 comps. Yeah, uh, 100. you got to make it a couple extra oh, 100 God, bucks. Yeah, you know? yeah, you have to, bro. <laughs> but these days you wouldn't get the demand. I remember like, again, like when you were That's running. That's how big the demand was, though, for those tickets. Well, you bought us, oh. you bought Carl and I, and that was yeah. what it was. You guys printed 500, split them in half, gave it to me and Carl. And the first, the and first event Carl <laughs> sold for me, he sold 55 tickets. I'll never forget it. I'm like, bro, just quit whatever you're doing as a job and just come and work for me, mate. But that was the thing. Back then as well, I don't know how it is now in that younger scene, right? But Promoted DJs was a, a huge part of the industry, and it sucked out. we I would literally. That. No, but at the beginning it wasn't like that. Like at the beginning it was, and this is me defending myself as a promoter. But at the beginning it was like you sold to your community, and then yes. our community became communities. Like our friends, we all know each other's friends. Like all sitting here, we're all still hanging out. No, no, or no. We casually, rag, no, fuck, we catch up. We have a lot of. Yeah. There's we um, catch up, and when you know when we do these reunion events, like made in Melbourne coming up. We get together because it's that time we can kind of hang out and reminisce. Absolutely. But like you look at that bad thing, people like you know I hate promoting TJs. But originally you sold them to your friends, yeah. and then all the people that you were in the club with, they became friends, and then That's we true. would just travel. Like the same crew that was at Corova was yeah. a TFU. It was the a same, family, man. We'd, we'd go to Fort, we'd go to Debbie Does, we'd go here, we'd go whatever. Like every weekend it was like that's where we're going. It was like a social calendar. So and, and that's where that community and culture's gone now because people sell tickets online. And not so just that. There's no yeah. one touching tickets in. Yeah. Not yeah. just that. I feel like as well. Like when we were younger, I remember if there was a Dirty Days on or Made in Melbourne or something, we'd be at someone's house and there'd be, I'm not even kidding, man, even in my place where I was to live when I was still younger, there'd be 60, 70 people at my house. Yeah, beforehand. Or at someone's houses. And I'm back then, pre Uber, we'd have to dial <laughs> fucking 13 Maxi at like 6 pm <laughs> and say, I need six of the cunts, 11 seaters. <laughs> And we'd pull up to Burke Street. I'm not yeah. kidding, man. Everyone can vouch. We'd pull up to Burke Street, Carova, TFU, whatever the fuck was going on. Even Roxanne's back in the day. Yeah, I've got it. Roxanne's. Oh, yeah. seven, oh, we've we've 70 of us, man. That's yeah. a good venue, man. Oh, I, I, I see 1200 there. I blew that system too. <laughs> Three rooms? That what happened to that room? Turned into that golf joint. I don't yeah. forget we went into, man. Yeah. Fornicated. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was fornicated. Fornicated. Yeah. Oh. Uh, that was a big payday for myself. <laughs> I, I mean, remember maybe they got sick. No of sale of comps <laughs> required. <laughs> I sold everyone by that one. Um, but that was like the demand and whatnot. But yeah, things have changed now, and that's why I think that you talk about the club and what's gone wrong. I think it's that there is no community anymore. Because when you yeah. go to a club, you don't know anyone. COVID ruined things, man. Yeah. It really did. Oh, mm. fuck yeah. It was bad. Especially internationally, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah the whole world was just upside down. No one in Australia, no one in Australia is making music anymore. Like originals. Who's making originals? Uh. There's still a lot of producers out there. Like, yeah, but do they make originals? Absolutely. Like now, now that I'm in the um, teaching and mastering space, mm -hmm. I'm mastering a lot of people's music, and they're all originals. There's no bootlegs, and people are putting out. Look, it might be self-release and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but there are producers, and I, I teach a lot of production online. There's a. I think COVID kicked that off mm -hmm. in terms of everyone was at home, mm -hmm. so you couldn't DJ. Yeah. So a lot of people either got better at production or got into production. Mm -hmm. So everyone was buying sample packs. Yeah, yeah. Online masterclasses Cut became a really big thing back then in COVID, yeah. and that also made learning accessible. Mm -hmm. And I'm in that space now too, and it's so beneficial. Yeah, of course. I, I think, right, like even with learning DJ. That's why young producers today that got an advantage with social media. Just well, like advantage is learning. in the word, man. Yeah. You buy a sample pack. Yeah. You can make a banger mm. in three minutes. Like if you're an if you're experienced producer. Yeah, yeah. You get a sample pack. You mm. can make a you can make a tune a hit. Mm. In seconds, it's done. Because mm. you'll have that ear already. If you, uh, no, but I, I'm even teaching younger kids now, 18 years old, their first track mm. is going off. Yeah, no shit. My, well, if, if I showed you my first track, uh, I'll probably remember dude, it. Dude, I've actually. 126 a.m. It sounded like a cat trying to break out of a back. Yeah, yeah, it just sounded like someone screaming in a mental institution. <laughs> like people would scream when it played. I brought this kid with me to Argentina um, <clears throat> a couple of months ago. He's 16, man. This kid. His productions off, off, off the charts. Yeah, hundred percent. And he's sixteen, man. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. what I mean? Like, imagine like what he's gonna be like when he's like twenty five. Yeah, and, and that's the technology advance and accessibility to the tools of master classes and sample packs. Yeah, yeah. Coming. But he back, that's what he did over, over COVID. He, he, he taught himself with like watching videos and stuff like 100%. that. Shout out to Robbie, by the way. And, and, and we didn't have all that. But you know the thing was, I loved 
that we no, got I learned there. DJing and production that way. Mm. Granted, it took a bit longer. Like, even now, like, talking about DJing, right? I played the other week, it was a techno gig, right? And I played after a guy from overseas, and that is a friend of mine. And I'll never forget, I'll, I'll refact, I played in Sydney two months ago. Yeah. And when I was playing out with the DJ, it was just a local guy, mm. and he's like, well, when you're ready, you know, I'll fade out, we'll do a bit of a clap, and we'll keep going. Every gig I ever played in my life, you just go straight in, mate. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, that was the best part, yeah. because you would, you knew when the new DJ started yeah, the without music. an announcement. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So I just said, mate, keep it going. And I just mixed in off the bat, and he was spinning out like I was Maradona. Yeah. You, know, you couldn't believe it. Why? And then even at the other gig I just played, I was getting ready, I queued up my track, beat matched it, ready to go. Oh. Press play, he's like, oh, I'm gonna take it out. And then stopped it, <laughs> round of applause and started, and then no I had shit. to start my set. I'm like, I'm not used to that. Yeah. Like, I, call I me an old man, but I'm not used to that. I did a few times back at 2 four, I was like, I Nah, it's starving. You gotta go in, mate. Yeah. <laughs> but that was the best part. Like, for example, you'd be at the bar, you, you knew maybe t Rex was playing after yeah, you. Yeah, you can tell. You can tell but then, you, th- then the track would come in, you're like, fuck t Rex on, let's go to the bar. Adam's on, let's go to yeah. the bar. Yeah, no, no, but I'd start fresh though. Remember with Dean? I'd always do, do like that. I'd loop like one of the samples and I'd start it off like really slowly and then build it up. No, I've really did a few yeah, but not times. every week. Yeah, well, I did it for a while. Yeah, I'd be upstairs a few times if I can. <coughs> Stop it and start again like hey. after, yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. after Dean would finish or yeah, whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. But I agree with I agree with you, like you gotta go in, mate. Yeah, you gotta go in, but you wanna know the and that's when you know like a, a different DJ's on and someone that you like, you just know why. But internationally they do that. <clears throat> Fuck those cunts. But again you go back to what we're talking about now, the genre was different, you know, like so you could hear you guys change and you knew. Yeah. Like the songs or the sounds or everyone had like a sound. Oh yeah. Whereas now it's legitimately the same music that's on TikTok. Oh, oh. for the next five hours, yeah. And so it's like you can't tell the difference. So yeah, there's no bootlegs. there's not that separation of sound. And not just that. I remember when I play after Adam or play after T Rex, that was then my opportunity to show them that I could fucking mix. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very true. That's gone. Yeah. And you know Especially what? Especially after half a bottle of whiskey. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> right? But that's the thing. But we wanted that opportunity yeah, to show know. people watching. Because I, I don't know how it is now, but back then as well, DJs, and that's not just me, but Dim, and, and Adam can contest this. told me many times used to go to Rebs every week and watch Bulls, Bulls play. Yeah, every week. We, we were obsessed with other DJs and watching what are they doing, how are they doing, that's how we would get better. We didn't have YouTube and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and other, that's also gone. On the other spectrum too, because it was an art. You know, when oh. someone fucked up, everyone was like, and we'd all be in the bar like, yeah, like it was yeah. like, it added to it. If anyone <laughs> heard anyone fuck up, mm. the dim would be it. that close to your ear socket. It'd <laughs> <laughs> be like, <laughs> It's not even funny, and I'll be honest, I, I, don't, I never get nervous. <laughs> I DJ never get nervous, none of that work, all right? <laughs> Three, four times when I knew I was a bit buckled, I go, where's with him? Because he's gonna fucking hear this. And I'm, the thing was, I don't care that I fucked up. It's just that I knew the rest of my night was ruined. <laughs> <laughs> For the next, and this is no exaggeration. For the next six hours of my night, he's gonna be that close yelling at me. <laughs> the solo ones. And the problem was, this is cunt here, I've only heard him out a beat twice. Oh, in his whole life. Do you know what I mean? So it used to draw me fucking nuts. And it's like you go back to that culture thing. Well, too, you like, never stop. Yeah, you were pretty tight. Tight mixer. No, well, because, I'll because give him that, I, mate. I was tight. never, I was yeah. never like, let, let's be honest. Like I was never a, pro- a producer, right? Yeah. So like I didn't have that edge. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I tried to find tunes that no one else had. Yeah. Number one, but also like with re- the mixing. I remember you yeah, mixing. Very, it was like, tight. Like, there you go. Yeah, you were the star world before. He did. <laughs> and then you got moved. I just remember like you was like you were like a tick of approval with Butters like, yeah, the kid can mix. You're like, oh cool, we can book him now. Yeah. But you were like the, the tester. Yeah. Um the other thing culturally too is like, you know, people have pre-drinks now. I remember back when we used to run Corova, you and me would start training like midday. Oh. So we would have, pre-drinks would be like 12 hours before the gig. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, in the peak, and you can all probably attest to this, in the peak of Corova, let's say it was, I don't know, 2009 as an example. Around that time, by the time I got to Tuesday, I couldn't function properly. Yeah, same. Like my exo- I, I'll never forget, right? I, I was in a car park, right? On a Tuesday night with Sumo, right? Yeah. And all those old Corova boys. And the excitement level, and, and, and we were just roaring Tuesday night. Yeah, just, really. Like right. every week, we couldn't wait. Like yeah, literally could bad. not. And you know what's funny? It might come with age, I'm sure, but you don't get that anymore. Nah. nah. Like, like, I know there's big events happening in Melbourne and stuff, but is, there, is the younger generation literally, week by week, 
dying to get to the club again. But we also, we had nothing else to do. Yeah, and so it yeah. wasn't like, we didn't have all these like Netflix or, you know, video game consoles or whatever back Less then. distractions. It was like, yeah. we, that was it. Like that was your one time out. But the thing is, let's not lie. It wasn't one night. It was Thursday, Friday, Ooh. Saturday, Sunday. And like you talk about those games we mentioned before, but like, fuck Mondays. Mm. Like that was a Sunday night thing where there was multiple options to go out on a Sunday, but we'd go, what time did it start? 6 p.m. I started something? at 6. Yeah, 6 p.m. and we'd close <coughs> yeah. up at 1. Mm. And that was like the end of your weekend. And mm. you either that was went, the, from, yeah. went to revs after, or you... Kicked on to revs. Yeah, yeah. And circus till 9 o'clock, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Holding on to the, the tram as, I, as I'm riding through at 9 o'clock in the morning, closing. <laughs> Closing till nine o'clock. Watching joggers uh, yeah. run and just starting to question your life about what you should like, be doing. And then like Thursday would always be cube art on the Thursday. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then like play school obviously. Yeah. But then, even then it would be like play school then cube art. Yeah, hundred yeah, yeah, percent. Yeah. 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 But then I was also like sometimes uh, I remember Tuesdays the uni nights and stuff yeah. like you'd have like a, oh, a huge hey, yeah, room cheers, and cheers, Hawthorne. Cheers. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah. And like you talk about Glenferry, there was like fuck. At that Glenferry was huge on a Tuesday. Yeah. There was four venues open, dude. You had yeah. Cheers, you had um, room. room, you had Nevermind, you had the Hawthorne, like they're all packed. Hey, do you remember the venue Concrete? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah I played yeah, in there. It's the worst sound ever. The walls of concrete. The walls of concrete. It's back to you. <laughs> yeah, it was the funny. Worst, bro. And we had the link. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the link yeah, in the Thursday night. Yeah, yeah. I had the, the, wheel, I had the wheelers in my area. It was fucking pumped. Mad. Yeah, wheelers. And they used to play there for that too, eh? Thursday night. What was yeah. that one they on the Saturday night in Mooney Ponds? The two. Yeah. Or one. Oh, yeah, one. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, That's what I was thinking. It's funny, like all these random stuff sort of started because. And that doesn't happen anymore. Dude, <laughs> do you know, back in the day, on a public holiday weekend, I had, I had fucking 18 gigs. Oh, easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, do you know the record, my record is 24 gigs in a weekend. And that was like from. From like it was like a double public holiday weekend or something yeah, like that. Later. Nowadays it's not like that anymore. Like pre-COVID, Melbourne was humming. Yeah, like, oh. it really was. Every venue, every night was doing well. You but even run... rural, bro. Like the boys. I remember when we first started. Like you know, no one wanted to touch what we were doing. Yeah. So we were, it was literally just oh, yeah, Corova, yeah. Wawa, and TFU. And originally it was just TFU. Then you know, like we sort of bridged out. And then by the, towards the end of it. You know, we were fucking, everyone was going to Bendigo, Ballarat, Geelong, like playing yeah, all these yeah, venues, all the regional, regional shit. And then <coughs> that's when like the Loud Bowl started, like when we used to do that, that little amphitheater on the side of uh, the bowl. Summer Bowl. The Summer Bowl, bro, like that. The dance, dance Cafe. Bro. Oh, how dance good ca- dance cafe. Summer summer bowl. Dance cafe, that yeah. first dance cafe, Summer, summer Days. days. Yeah. It was Summer Days. Can I tell the story about that, please? Go. <laughs> dance Cafe was an iconic moment for all of us. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. More so, like, what was Dance Cafe? I can't so, we, it was Dance Cafe, was, remember that little side <coughs> we used to have off the side of, um, that you would have played it. Oh, we called, and we used, to, Meyer, we used to call the loud yeah, ball. That, pro- that was proper. But hang on, before yeah. that, 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 the year before, I think you guys done Kiss My Grass. Oh, yeah, yeah. I played in the FK. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I closed Kiss My Grass 2008. I was there. And I was on a fucking, they had me on a massive pedestal in the sky, right? Now, picture this. He rises, yeah? It was a 30 fucking six degree day. I played after, I um, can't remember who it was, but I remember him dropping, um, um, you know, that in, drop select, uh, that crank yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember getting up there, climbing up this fucking ladder to get to this, this thing, dude. I was, you talk about dripping, I was dripping that much. I had to take my shoes off, right? <laughs> and I was literally dancing in a, a puddle of my sweat, yeah? It was boiling. Like, thank God no one could see me because I was up in the sky. And I can remember playing uh, that um, uh, the, rim, the Switch remix of um, Kyle Minogue. Oh my god. Oh. Do you remember? Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, yeah. Only hearts. Two hearts. Oh, man. Oh, no, the Gaten remix. It went oh, off its head, man. I remember I was there and bought. My personal opinion, Kiss My Grass was my favourite. Oh, I was going to say, amazing. for those that don't know, Kiss, Kiss My Grass was a local event that used to do like 10,000 people and it was a station called Kiss FM. Yeah. Well, we'll probably go into that too. That but... still exists, by the way. Oh, yeah, Kiss <laughs> FM. So, Kiss FM was his local station and they it's gave us... still around, bro. Oh, is it still around? Yeah. It's still around. But they used to do, I reckon, 10, 12,000. Oh, that's And it was out. only locals, only... Only local DJs, yeah. But like, that was another thing But you talk back in the old days. It's like, you know, we had these little opportunities that got bigger. Mm. But I was like, we, we had two venues and it was six venues and it was eight venues and it was Kiss My Grass and that that was shit like where we played but at the time we were like you know this is a moment for us it and was, then it you look back at those those the little amphitheater off the back of the thing Loud Bowl Dance Cafe whatever but it's like then it, it's got bigger and bigger and bigger and like that's something that you can't replicate like we could never ever no. you could never ever no. 
even explain how we went from fucking rooms with 40 people mm. to playing in front of four or 5,000 people, yeah? Mm. Like, and it blew up and it was only here. You couldn't play it in Melbourne. No, I no. know you went to Argentina, you had a little bit of overseas success, but yeah, I've been nobody else did. 30 times, mind you. <laughs> you love Argentina. 30 times, bro. How many times? 13. Good Fuck. barbecue, man. Mate, good oh, good barbecue. Bro. Hey, good women too, man. Let me tell you. Yeah, so when we did, like, Mark, I also remember, I remember one time, there was, there was Disclosure and uh, Hudson Mohawk were playing on that backstage behind the back. Mm. And I went over to watch Disclosure and it was like maybe 250 people. And then I came back and I reckon it was you guys playing and there was like four and a half thousand people and you yeah, couldn't I got a photo of it. No. And it was insane. Yeah. There was also Future, you remember Future? Future, yeah. yeah. Was, when yeah. It which event was it? That, it was fucking that, it, it, I played down. it from yeah, the hill, the hill went yeah, up. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Dude, I, I dropped on a trumpet there. That yes. day, day it went off, it's nuts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll never forget it. I remember, I was at that Kiss Montgraski that you played. Yeah. And one of my favorite tracks back then was the Cookers remix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the track? Um, Salmon Dance or no? Salmon, no, no, no that was one of them. I know what you're talking about though. Uh, it was a short one. It was like three minutes. It had the horse in it. Bum 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 yeah, I remember Sean Quinn played. Um, but my room was—I was, remember it was, on, it was on the right of the stage. Yeah. And it was just wall to wall, man. Yeah, because I, I opened the next year. Yeah. In the F two fifty, who else played? F two fifty. So know. so we had a, we had a loud stage. It sounds like a Grand Prix. At, at Kiss at Kiss My Grass. Yeah. And I played in the back of an F two fifty. I think it was truck. him. I think you, no, it was a Kiss maybe. It was like I think one of Kazam. I can't remember. Yeah. It was fucking. Nah, nice, the Kiss. Man. Yeah, that was the that was the. I think we only, I think, from memory, done one. I didn't play that yet. one, yeah. Because yeah. then yeah. we lost the radio show. Yeah. Because what? No, was... no, no. The radio show was after, which was, uh, which is, yeah, probably another thing to touch on. But no, it was. Uh, we only done. I remember Kiss My Grass once, and I remember you playing. It was like a, a stage on the on the hill. If you're on looking, the right. if you're looking directly, on the right. I don't know why they the stopped that. Bro. On the right. So well, what's a successful, a successful? I'm assuming successful. it just didn't sell or whatever. Yeah, but money, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember like with Kiss FM too. We'd all be like, you know, we had the loud show. We had other shows. We TV show. TV show, and then it was like. At the beginning, it was like, even again, like we'd go in there, be like five or six of us, just be hanging out during the week, you're talking about like all those boys, and it'd be like Northwood and the East boys hanging out. And it was a, it was a moment, you know, like yeah. we were sort of sitting there fucking playing tunes, and we thought we were taking over the world. And it was, it, I, I'll never forget those days. And then you guys, unfortunately, uh, took over for a couple of weeks when I was absent, and um, we lost that show. <laughs> <laughs> what? How'd that happen, mate? I don't know, mate. I ended up with the John Doe show for a few months, mate. So, I don't know what doing, mate. <laughs> so what happened was, yeah. we did got a show called the John Doe show. Did you? So he'd book, yeah. you know, me and the boys, Laskus Heath and all that. But what happened was, is this after we no, this is before. Then. No, well, well, even when he had it, it was a Thursday night off Chapel Street, and this was full pirate radio. Off Chapel too. Street, yeah. they tore moved it, didn't they? Yeah. It was pirate radio. Yeah, it, was. it was like it was like in a little fucking like cracked in house. It only it only worked. Yeah, it was fucking radio. To the True. station, to listen to like, and people were sitting in the car tuning in. Yeah, yeah. like you couldn't. You, yeah. It wasn't even like internet to tune. There's no digital. Like, <laughs> it was pirate radio. Yeah, it was, it was. There was one. There was a pub. It was like a um. I think it was like a gay bar or whatever, and they had all the hallways and stuff up there. Remember that? Oh, up there. Up, yeah. up the top. Like and a they lounge. Just, yeah, and they just and they just hired. It was like it literally looked like a. Like what was up. this? We should play that after annual. When I was a upstairs. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then they had that one at the end, the last one I remember going to was the one with the train station? Or yeah, was oh, yeah, up the top. Oh, yeah, shit, shit. Fuck, I'll drink a slab, mate. Oh, I'm just going to start by saying um, we had a short intermission. <laughs> short, um, short intermission, but we're back. So we were talking about Kiss FM and uh, old mate Mickey Knox was about to get into the story about how Vadim closed not only our show, but his own show. So what, to give, run us through that again. I might let Vadim take it. Oh. I don't want to uh, add pepper yet. You got toilet paper on your shoe, bloke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of the reasons you lost it. What a disgrace. You wouldn't even care. Nah, I Mate. remember. I remember the. We had a few. That's it. Yeah, wreck the image for everyone. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, 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 nothing's changed. Yeah, yeah, put on the other one. Any other one in That's it. Yeah. At least he's trying. This is great. Yeah, it was funny. It was off his head when it came off first time. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 like, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, oh. Um, yeah, where were we? Elegantly resuming. Um, 
No, because we we originally had the Karoba show. Yeah, Karoba show. It yeah. Would change like the Karoba show, loud show, it changed all the time. Yeah, so originally it was the Karoba show, and we used to kind of every week. I remember it was Monday night. Yes. It used to yep. be like I think from memory, like was like eight night. o'clock. No, but it was like late as well. The punch was still going. Eight or nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah, it was eight. It was eight pm to ten pm. Yeah, and um, you know, you used to do a good Monday back in the day, Mercury Lounge. Yeah. Yeah, didn't know that. Take a crown. Yeah, it was huge too. It was a huge line. All divorce seats. Heat used to do Sunday. Mercury was Monday. Heat. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Sorry, man. No, it's right. But yeah, we we used to do rotations like of who. um, Then rust up. Yeah, who plays every week? And I don't think it was like bad from the get go, but I think it was. Well, because originally myself, Lamar, or Kyle would sit in, and then we wouldn't have the coins and stuff. And then over time, the polish kind of like. It wasn't as exciting, so then it was like people put their hands up, and you guys sort of started to take it to the next level where you started to have call ins. Well, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so people could call in and talk about what had happened on the weekend. Yeah, and like <laughs> the tunes live as well. Yeah, live. The, the, the tunes were like always, always good, but it got to a point where, like, back in back then, we were, had a few running jokes between one another, and then we just started putting people to bath on live radio <laughs> and um yeah i remember one that that time that kind of sealed the deal was uh yeah we we kind of used to play the first half an hour then we'll do like an intermission then we'll chat shit for about five ten minutes and then because there were so many people in the one room it wasn't hard to like for someone to jump in and yell something and it would just come across <laughs> And then because we were just going straight back at each other, we just started going off on live. Oh he's trying to shift the blame now. He's trying to shift the blame. Hang on. <laughs> what would happen is, right, there, there was naturally a bit of a competition of who got most buckled on the weekend. Yeah. Right? <laughs> just normal back then. And what would happen is, we'd sort of put that out there, and girls, guys would start ringing in, telling their stories of me and him or, you know, Laskus and whoever else was there, <laughs> and start, you know, telling R-rated stories from He's weekends. He's a little sniper, Laskus. Yeah. He was. <laughs> but there was... Shout out, Pete. But, yeah, hello, Pete. But, yeah, there was the, that one night where, like, we were just going off and people were ringing in and... Capos. Yeah, yeah Capos was on the phone. Yeah. And Capos! Oh, I love Capos! Wow. <laughs> I've still got the recordings. I've still got the recordings. Do you have music, Capos? And then, oh, yeah. Yeah. and then there was a little, there was a little telephone, just <laughs> just next to the decks. Was and, it? Um, yeah. As as we finished like the the ten fifteen minute ramble. Oh yeah yeah. Um, we started playing music, and then the phone rang, and that was the first time oh. I I heard the phone ring. And I was like, Sorry. what the fuck's going on here? So I pick up the phone, and it was Tim Tim Byrne, whose name was. Yeah, he still owns it. And he's like, he's like, the dim. This is the worst radio I have heard in, t- in 20 years. He goes, you better fucking stop right now. And I'm like, uh, okay. And I'm pretty sure you had a sample. I just told him, yeah. <laughs> but what happened sample. was, it, so live radio, we will be confused what was going on because we couldn't hear Tim. But Vadim just sort of goes, sure, Tim. Yes, Tim. Okay, mate. No, I'm so sorry, mate. And he hung up and I got the clonk hung up and he goes because Laskus was playing next and he goes Pete it's a music ASAP <laughs> and he started DJing so I took the recording sampled that part and put it into a tune and I just played every week and I've still got it I have to find it you'd actually play it out yeah, yeah. No, I used to play it out it was a joke because with him you'd be at Kroger Bar now and then the bass would cut out and go yes Tim <laughs> sorry Tim uh, so music Pete ASAP dum 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 it was the best I'll find it and I'll send it to you. That's great. And that's the other thing that goes back to like, you know, when you talk about those in-jokes, like we were talking about before, but we, there was, like there was in-jokes from everybody. And I know we talk about the, you were talking about the cabs, how you'd have like six cabs coming through. Yeah. On the other side of the city, in Scoresby, the old CD, there was as much the same. There was, sometimes you'd roll there on a Tuesday to pick something up, like a jumper you'd left there. <laughs> and there were still a few fellas who, was, who hadn't finished up hey, on Friday. <laughs> the weirdest thing that we got in, in, in the, um, what's it called? The bloody Coca room at Two Floors? A fucking bowling ball. I was about to say that. <laughs> well, yeah. I was going to say that before we were talking about the guy on the door. I rocked up the door and the bowling ball. I can remember. It was great. <laughs> Who did that? I don't know. Another yeah. thing too, talking about weird shit at clubs. Well, at uh, Revs, it was a, I'll never forget, it was a straight day weekend. They had some massive party on, Bulls and T-Rex and all the usual suspects were playing. And we'll, I remember, we we'll lift Zach loose. You were there. <laughs> and we are drinking Trevor Cock and Bulls. They were like a yogurt shop back then. 
and I'm like, I'm gonna go for a dart. So I go for a dart, it's like midday, it's 31 <laughs> degrees, Australia Day weekend. Oh, yeah, oh, shit. Yuck. And the Rev smoking here is already a bit of a scene. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm And I'll never forget it, man. It was jamming, so I was like trying to, you know, get in the middle of it to get a bit of fresh air. And then there was four blokes with floaties on sitting in a blow up pool <laughs> in the smoking area. Hi, Revies. And I'm like, fuck, you gotta go, Steph. <laughs> well, Pack it up, mate. What's going on? <laughs> but the thing about Revies was, look, I remember we all started playing there eventually, but it took a while, right? But that was through my Tony, yeah? Yeah. yeah? yeah. It was always the, it was the hardest, like, for, what, for us at the time, it was the I hardest gig to get into. Mm. And that's what I remember, I remember you saying you played there the first time, and I remember there was, was fucking 200 of us there. Yeah, like yeah, we all, everyone yeah. went down to support because it was yeah. such an iconic moment. Because yeah, like, yeah, you, you cracked it first, I and remember. then everyone, like Heath, you, whatever, I remember everyone played there, and it would be like 150 people from all, like, that we used to hang out with back then, that would go there to support these. Remember those pool tables? Yeah. And the arcade oh, machine. I remember those yeah, pool yeah, tables. Yeah. Yeah. I remember a friend of ours got buckled hard on the MD, <laughs> and he just went up, and he was playing Street Fighter for eight hours. <laughs> It was just fucking roaring, mate. Just, you know. uh, and that's how the worst time, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, well. But, but Revs was that place, I'll never forget. Like, we back then, we'd finished Burke Street. We'd all wait at the front. Everyone, whoever was left standing going to Revs, it'd be maybe 40 of us. <laughs> Maxis to Chapel Street. We'd go in. And I'll never forget. I'm like, you know what? It's Sunday. Like, the hard work was done. T you you just... Put the tools finish, down, yeah. Put, and you just relax. It's and just get least. next level buckled. <laughs> and you just sit on the sub. And I just watch Boogs and T Rex. Oh, what are they doing, man? How do they do that? How do they do that? What the fuck yeah. is going on, Tarak? You bastard. I don't know. You know? But it's funny because you look back, like, you know, we're now, like, OGs. And those guys were our OGs. Yeah. So we go watch them play, and they were putting on master classes for oh. us to watch. So they were the generation before us. Boogs would trip me out. Man. Even now, oh, man. Oh, fuck. He's the king, man. He'd just trip me out. I'd be standing there going, I'll never be able to do that. Never. Never, man. I don't know. And, and still now. And still, look, oh, that fucking. Oh, him and Tarek, man. Yeah, both very, very good mixes. I think you undersell yourself. I reckon you're the best in Melbourne, in my opinion. Nah. I know you always put it down there, but... But Boogs, man, like, I, I, would, I would just freak out. Seriously. And then I was convinced that he could do a 360 with his foot. Like, he could... I was, I was so bummed at Revs. I used to see his foot turn 360. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck's going on? <laughs> man, he's just the... He's just amazing, man. Yeah, he's and just next yeah. level. Paying homage to those dudes, it's like you, you, you can't give him as much enough respect. He was royalty there, dude. I remember once. Oh, should I say that? Nah, probably shouldn't. Yeah, cool. We'll that. <laughs> but he's definitely royalty. Like, yeah. like, 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 when I was coming up, like obviously yourself and Dean, yeah. um, Corvo, and then Coleman. It, it was Coleman. Yeah, but more so from a DJ perspective. Yeah. For me personally. Yeah. Like. T Rex and Bulls. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And Spacey. Them. We're just undefeated. And Spacey, yes. Yeah, yeah. But like they were just, oh, I don't know, man. Even uh, now, they're different a different level, man. Yeah, man. And I love the fact that it was like very minimal crossover in tunes yeah. as well. Like everyone had their own specific sort of that grudging sound. vibe back in like yeah. 2006. Well, it was Revy tunes. Like that's what it was. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah like, it was only, you could only hear it there. Like, it, yeah, was, it didn't yeah. work anywhere else but there. The other best thing about Revs is Revs still takes. Oh, how can I explain this? Like, even when I play there, I only play vinyl because the, re- the reason being. Even though I make techno stuff now, when I go there, I'll, I'll always get in the old bag, right? And Revs has the style of music. Y- yeah. You can't really pinpoint it, right? Nah, no, For example, what stands out to me about Revolver, like when I hear an old school Tigger tune or an old school Green Velvet tune yeah. and stuff like that, yeah. that's like the pinnacle it's of the Revolver. It's nostalgic, yeah. 100%. It is fucking mental, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just it takes fucking, you back there. Oh, like, man. Dude, back in the day, like, people used to like, dance on the tables, oh. sunglasses oh, on, man. blinds are open. But that, that was the thing again, like you talk about TFU, Corrobe, whatever, the rules were very not there. Oh, very yeah, loose. Like, you could do what you want. No rules. And that's why you you smoke on the dance floor when you went oh, to yeah, yeah. and like you could go wherever you wanted and like you can talk about TFU, I got kicked out of, no, I actually didn't get kicked out. I used to get sin bin by Colbeck. So if I was real fucked, he'd make me sit on, <laughs> on he'd, yeah. he'd make me sit on like the, uh, like a box out the back. Yeah. And if I moved, he'd slap me with a thong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dean's right. used to get kicked out of two floors every week. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and but those, those guys still put it on, man. Like T Rex played here on this billboard, where, the venue we're in now, billboard. But it's like T Rex played uh, here not a year ago, I think it was. And then he fucking put on a show. Like when T Rex on, or Boogs is on, or Space yeah. is on, yeah, those right. guys still to this day are yeah. undisputed. Yeah, like they're oh, yeah. the best of the best. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no doubt. And, and going back to when we at the start, we were talking about like historical moments and standout moments. 
when Outlaw Bitch came out. Oh, oh, that bitch. run of Burke Street. How about when Faces of Meth? I was going to say, Faces of Meth. Yeah, but huge. Outlaw Bitch was bigger. You reckon? Oh, nah. Yeah, man. I don't know about that. I, I reckon, I reckon. Man. Like, well, for me, like, in, the, in that booth, when that motherfucker would play Outlaw Bitch, and he had, all, he had so many hits. Yeah. And, 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 he, and, and he'd make his own special little edits of it. Oh, yeah. Walk Pantera? Yeah. But like, I think Black Dog Shuffle, Queen of the Stone Age, like what the fuck? But I think at the Black time Shuffle, that was man, just that? as the as the whole technology thing started rising as well, where people had easier access to these tunes. Whereas before, like, dude, I had to, I had to had buy to the in the mix books books yeah. in the mix CD just to get free Show this guy number three. Yeah, yeah. Or oh, you had to buy the actual CD. I, I had to buy the books. From... I had to buy that CD. Yeah, because I put... oh, what was that record shop? What was that called? Um, Rhythm and Soul. Rhythm and Soul. Yes, I remember buying the free Show Disco one just to get the. Fucking, there's these tunes on the Yeah, yeah. was upstairs back then. Was it? Yeah, and and, and then uh, Boogs did vinyl push up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't as good as in the mix. Either. In the mix, yeah. in, the in the mix, mix, mix is like my Bible, I reckon. Yeah, my Bible was in the mix. Ajax and Tigger. Sunday, yeah? 05, Yeah. Fuck, Ajax copped it. Yeah, so, so, yeah oh, fuck. Fuck. There's um your Sunday church for me, like I'll call it that yeah. the first one. <laughs> and, then, oh. <laughs> and then the second one was. What was the tune that I started it with? That that ding a ding a ding a ding. Which church? Which church? Yeah, but what's that song? We're gonna get this motherfucker. What song is that? What's his name? Ira, modern Ira, and fucking chopstick. No, 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 no. It goes, it goes. Ding a 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 ding that was a I know it, I know it. I can't remember the tune. That was huge. That I'll, was I'll, huge. I'll put this, I played at Bucks Party two weeks ago. Yeah. And it was old, old school tramp and few heads. Yeah. And like, just play old school bangers. Yeah. So I was playing all those hits, right? And I played Man Eater Remix, then oh, perhaps. Oh, oh, Still oh, one of my favourite tunes oh, yeah. ever. Bam. And I messaged this cunt when I played it, right? <laughs> There's 20 blokes there, 40 toppies, everyone's off their gut. <laughs> and I messaged him, and I remember, he made that song 15 years ago. Yeah. Now, as you were saying before about BPM, we yeah. only used to play 128. Yeah, I know, yeah. Right? yeah. I'm yeah. scared of anything faster than that. For yeah. some yeah. weird <laughs> reason, 15 years ago, Paps made Maneater at 133 BPM. Yeah, he no did. Shit. Yeah. Which was random. Yeah, yeah, And I remember yeah. mixing it in, it wasn't 0.8, it was a weird, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Point eight rule. And, and I messaged him, I messaged <laughs> I still live by that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I messaged Paps two weeks ago when I played at this back party, and I said, Paps, there are a few things unsolved in the world. And I can't remember what I said, I was off my head. I'm like, no one figured out who shot JFK. No one worked out how they built the pyramids. I said, no one knows why the fuck you made Man Eater at 130. <laughs> and he's like, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> I said, I just dropped Man Eater in a box and it's going bananas. <laughs> so, that was a huge tune. Huge tune. Is that a lollipop, I reckon? And, oh, and. Well, All this love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The deep pass, deep pass, deep pass, deep pass. I record that. He made that. He goes, hey, come on to the list in the studio. The original one with the IBM and shit. <laughs> and he played, that, that he photo played it to me and I was just like, oh yeah, just need something. I'm like, give me the microphone. And I was just like, deep pass, deep pass. Crazy. And it made him. Send it off, bro. It, everyone would be driving down the street. People would be screaming it out of, out of the cars and shit. That's when his profile top. picture was him on a camel in Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Me and my mates, dude, still to this day, like, oh, like one of us would be sitting there and was like, quiet. And someone like, deep pass, deep pass. Deep pass, deep pass. <laughs> and everyone's like, <laughs> and so that's an iconic moment from back in the day. Oh, yeah. And you, it used to get so awkward when we play it, I remember. And the Love, Stone, the Love Stone remix. Yeah, yeah that was Just huge. awkward. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, there was that other one that everybody also wanted. Remember that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah. That, that, I, yeah. that was, that, a that was T-Rex one. Yeah. yeah. That one was everybody... No. His one was um, everybody get ready to roll. Yeah. Oh. yeah. That, Here we go. That yeah. was the best yeah. thing one, mate. Dude, that was the best, man. And that's where I, where I did that one from. Like, I. I had to do it myself because Tarek wouldn't give me the sample pass. But you, when you talk about like uh, those iconic tunes too, like you know Faces of Meth, which I I reckon is what really started everything. Yeah, mm. um, and then uh, for, I look at like Beach Ball, like Orchestrate. Now I listen back to it again, oh, huge production. But when you used to drop that at TFU, man, huge. The, oh, you, I wouldn't be waiting pop. all night. Like I wouldn't go home until that got played. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, and that was the days, and that was the thing you used to do that. Yeah, yeah. You would essentially be there and be like, oh yeah, machine play, be massive. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, like perhaps was so clever with production. Yeah. Like Lollipop, for example. Yeah, hey, that was my idea, mind you. He but, would have never done it. If I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but like, when you hear that... He wasn't cooked enough. Do, 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 do. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying, going back yeah. into mixing in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you'd be in the crowd, yeah. same yeah. as Phil Kieran, you'd hear that... Yeah. So yeah. You, you could anticipate... Oh, yeah, yeah, it cuts so it cuts you. If you're at the bar, you better yeah. fucking hurry up and get to the about to play. Or yeah. Beach Ball's about to play, yeah. or Love Stone, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's yeah. fucking gone, man. You used, to, you used to love Paranoia. Oh. You used to lose it. I used to hand it every week. You used to scream at me the whole time. And, sorry, 
going back to iconic tunes, there was a tune called um, Splash. Oh, oh yeah. by Charlie oh, Fan Club. We used to I don't think that. Yeah, so this is how it happened, right? I think Books. I think Books found it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But T Rex started playing it, Six and then years. there was a guy from Sydney called Distract who did an edit. So this song was, all, and you, you'll know the song if I play it. Today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This song was. It still mind blows me now. Fuck this song. It just kept building and building. Uh, every time, <laughs> every time, look, T Rex was playing it and Books was playing the Rebs, but obviously being oh, sure every week. Now. Every time this cunt played Splash, and then I started playing it, well, not just me, but people would lose their fucking mind. Yeah, lives. start screaming. Yeah. And that's another one people don't forget. Like, like oh, we all remember this, but splash. people would just fucking beat the shit out of the club. Like, mm. you just hear that boom, boom, boom. Oh, the yeah. wall slapping. And and yeah, the wall slapping was cool. Even, even like SoundCloud <laughs> just have that same effect. Not yeah. SoundCloud, this kind of. <laughs> sound wave. Yeah, sound yeah. wave, yeah, man. But that's why I remember, like, especially TV, like, people would stomp the ground and you just hear everyone like, fuck. Steve, like, Steve actually, would, be, would, would be the main person slapping shit. I can always remember <laughs> slapping the walls. I, slapping I think I reckon, I reckon your boys started it. Like, back in Crow when we first started, Sumo, I was there, yeah. Sumo on that. Sumo. Remember, they'd smash the walls and. Just put the fader down, and fuck! And then put yeah. it back up, yeah. And then they, and I remember that was the two issues that Moody always had. He's like, man, I love you boys, like, everything's good, but you fucking, every single week the mixes are fucked. Mm-hmm. And then every single week I've got to patch holes in the wall because everyone's punching holes in the wall. Yeah. And that was the culture. Oh, yeah. The culture yeah, was yeah, punching was as bad wild, as it is. Man. You still some <laughs> <laughs> just dramas. Yeah, but that was the problem, right? Like, like obviously we enjoyed it, yeah. And the solution. <laughs> yeah, like, like, yeah, that's right. Like, but like, when we got to Burke Street, Burke Street was only like one level at a time when we got there. Like it came from Zest, it started going off, then it died down a bit. Yeah. And every Saturday I was going there just as a patron, it yeah. was one level. Yeah. Then when Cole brought us in and we started promoting, we opened two levels because then Carova started coming, yeah. right? And then obviously we were all producing and doing bootlegs at Carova, so that whole crowd yeah. came to TFU. And the culture mixed and that's when yeah. it erupted. And then Burke Street just went fucking bananas for bananas. two, three years, man. And they were like, look, I, went, I used to go to Waratah and I, I still believe Waratah is undefeated. Oh. But maybe because I was more so involved in yeah. Burke Street, Burke Street Burke was Street just was huge. a fucking alien. Still super just, iconic. I still remember where you and your crew used to stand the, on the dance floor upstairs. It was like the back left corner. Yeah, but, but, yeah. But we had look. That's the beauty about going back when Danny was talking about community. Mm. It wasn't my crew or their crew or his crew. It wasn't a competition, but the family element was huge, yeah. of those residencies. So put it this way: when we started Corova, I was from one side of the city. He was from another side. Vadim Heath, all, all these walks of life, different nationalities, different ages, different, different we industries. Just, literally, we had like Russians, Italians, <coughs> Maori, yeah. like come everybody. together. Yeah. Biggest star, remember? To become no, best friends. That's <laughs> <laughs> story. <laughs> Come together to become best friends <laughs> and just that create fucking thing. magic. I'll never forget that, you know? baby. It's hundred percent true. Like he's saying, we came, everyone was from different nationalities, different walks of life, different parts of the city. We all combined, and then we became effectively one big family. That Huge. and we did create something that people still look about and want to hear about. Yeah, yeah. Like, we wouldn't be doing this if people didn't want to hear. I remember having the same conversation that he they offered at, at two floors one night, and I was and I was like, having a fucking rant about shit. I'm like, and look at these countries that I've never heard of before. I'm like, where the fuck did Uzbekistan come from? <laughs> And then the dip was he's like, well, Adam, I was actually born there. I'm like, fuck off! <laughs> 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 yeah, it was making stuff. Wait, I was like, the scant shout out. That's the St. Albans, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Where's that from? <laughs> Now, the other thing I was wrong, I'll never forget. We, me, me, so me, me, Dim and Heath got booked in a rural gig in um, Griffith. Yeah, I remember it. Griffith. <laughs> I'll this. never forget, bro. I would have booked it. Me, me, Dim. Uh, on the way there it was Caulfield Cup weekend and we got so Lamana was driving <laughs> and it was Lamana Ahmed the promoter and me and Vadim had a slab of Corona in the middle <laughs> and we just uh, we just demanding the pullover we had the piss <laughs> so you know especially back then 19 full prime alcohol drinking <laughs> we get halfway to Caulfield Cup uh, halfway to Griffith and we, we sell we were there for a piss we got something so we pull up to this random rural pub I don't remember where the fuck we were and I don't forget we walked in the pub was roaring because of Caulfield Cup. <laughs> Me, Vadim, so Italian, Russian, <laughs> Kiwi, he Frenata, <laughs> Lamana, Italian, and Armored Lebo, <laughs> <laughs> walk into this Aussie rural pub on Caulfield Cup. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was like those movies where like, Wait, some, like a villain would walk in the music, like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's when it hit me, man. I'm like, fuck, I've got like best mates now. From all that I've, like, I went to school with different nationalities, but not, not having friendships like this, man. Yeah. And, and, and even your crew, like when, when we met your crew, like with Suman and with you and, and, and all those boys, it was just fucking, it was nuts, man. It was about, it's still amazing seeing like some of these boys, I see like, 
Trenner and stuff and like all these guys out every time like it's just you literally stop and you reminisce about how all the time yeah, yeah about how good Crazy. it was yeah. I remember too like back I remember having this gig at 7 which you guys would have played 7 yeah it was, and Foley was doing it before the time and, and he was like you can you can do the side room and I remember I was like this is that big chance because like this is early mm. days and I was like, we all got to go there and we could have fucking put on a scene. And there was always private school kids mm. and there was us and we were like, fuck, back then, like, um, all these dudes with like long black fringes. Everyone looked like fucking emos or heavy yeah, metal heads. That's what and everyone's are. head banging and shit and they were just looking at us like all well, freaks. But mm. we were freaks at the beginning, yeah? Like, mm. that's a thing. It's when uh, I love Aposta gave me my DJ name, Rest in Peace. Yeah. Um, with the, the, whole, the whole John Doe, which is hilarious. And in the backyard the next day after seven, <laughs> called me, uh, called my DJ name, which is my name, Too Woggy. And he's like, oh, just give him like a fucking Bruce Smith or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, we'll just go with John Doe. That'll, that'll be the like so. And stuck forever, right? yeah. Rest in peace of pasta. Absolutely. Like fucking, the goat. So that, and then it goes back to what you were saying before, like when we do catch up. And there's two sort of ones that are iconic. So one is made in Melbourne, mm. when we all get to get together. And then I guess we'll probably talk about that, like when it first started. And then we'll finish. Uh, I'll we'll probably the first one. Yeah, then we'll go to the orchestrated 10 year party. So I think we'll start off with the first Made in Melbourne. So what people don't know about Made in Melbourne is still now, obviously there's one coming up, but basically it was the first big stage everyone played on. So we'd all played in these little grungy fucking car parks and you know, all these little venues that basically no one wanted to go to until yeah. underground, they were. Yeah. And then uh, the boys from here gave us a go at Made in Melbourne. And Made in Melbourne was a proper giant commercial nightclub, giant stage, proper production, yeah. where everyone got to put on a show. Yeah. And I remember back when we first started Made in Melbourne, it was like, if you got on the show, it was like a badge of honor. Yeah? Like, yeah. To be invited to do Made in Melbourne, you got the t-shirt. Yeah. And back the first one had Trap Steel on the back of it. Mm. And it was yeah. like, do you remember? <laughs> yeah. And then it was like, you got the t-shirt, people used to keep the lanyard. Lanyard. It was like. It was a badge of honour to get invited to play Made in Melbourne. Mm. And you had and an artist pack when you walked in. Mm, yeah. It was proper. Which we had never had before. It, was, it felt amazing. You yeah, got yeah, packs, but they were just different ones. Packs, yeah. Kets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, so that was like, and now to, like we talk about the next one, which I think, the, like, we probably hadn't seen each other all maybe four or five years, but it was when Adam did their 10 years of Orc. And I'm gonna say, man, like I've done events now for two decades, and my top R, I did one in Collingwood called Dirt Cheap Rave, I did Book of Shade, for me it was iconic. Mm -hmm. And then my favourite ever is a 10 years of war party. So mm -hmm. we were lucky enough to be invited to be a part of that. And mm -hmm. that was fucking the best event. And yeah. the, I think it was because... Was that the Penny? Penny, Penny no, Black. no, so originally at... Um, first one was Penny Black. Penny, Penny, yeah, Penny Black, that, was I was yeah. there. We was, all went there. So the like, restrictions was the first one. It was fucking mad. Yeah, and right. the first one we got there and it was like... Um, we all hadn't seen each other for fucking five, six years, but it was like a piece of Lego. Like we all yeah. just connected together it and mad. it was on. And we are all just... Blind. I remember I was super sunburnt, but like we were like yeah. mucking around. I had a good day. Good day. venue for that too. And it was it was iconic. And then I remember you the did Isabel. You did Isabella live. <laughs> yeah, first time. Yeah, yeah, I was right. so nervous. And they like, still probably one of my favorite moments. Yeah. Of the, like, I'm getting good people thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I've got that video, bro, and yeah. I still watch it sometimes yeah, when I need to cheer myself up. <laughs> if I'm having a bad day, I just fucking put on that yeah, live version of Isabella. Good That's fun. a tune, mate. But that was one of my favorite events that we ever did. And put your name in it. No, not because of that. That's but it does though. You have an iconic stats. Yeah, but that, that's bump, how bump. old school you cunts are. You were in the song. That's fine. I wrote that in 2007. Summer of 2007. 2007? Yeah. That's making me feel fucking old now. But Danny, going back to that party, when I walked in there, it was like a time machine. Yeah, 100%. I found the venue was different, but the, the people. Yeah. And, and you're the good thing. How long was it going? Five years? Six. It was what? Two, would have been 2016. Oh, 10 year party. Yeah, so pre kids. Summer and stuff. of 2017. 2017. Yeah, there you go. So I didn't have kids in that year, so it still felt like. Well, clubbing in that. It was, yeah, it was like a time yeah, yeah. machine. It was like walking in and you saw, as you were saying before, like how that crew was on that part of the yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like that. And every, like, like I didn't leave that night thinking, oh, fuck, he wasn't there, she wasn't there, he yeah, wasn't no, there. Yeah, everyone was there. Everyone was there, man. Yeah. Mm. It was like a fucking. Did she play? That was, yeah, that was yeah, crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was crazy. He yeah. both played. Yeah. 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 It was, yeah, nuts, so it, was <laughs> <laughs> it was actual auction. There was actual auction in France. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, I remember you did another one at XC54 that we played. Dude, did he, I've done heaps. Right, yeah. But like, we did. Um, the first two were the most iconic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then what's funny about it is when we first saw it, you remember, it was like, it was not struggling, but it was like selling normally. The first and one. The, and when we the got second one sold out in like a minute, didn't it? Because the, all, all the, the videos went up. Yeah. Because all the videos went up and everyone was like, fuck, I missed out on yeah, this. Yeah. And the next one, I think it, sold, it would have sold out in like four or five minutes. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, like, really like, it was good, but it wasn't as good as the first one. The first one was iconic. It's and like, I, and then it goes back to that Made in Melbourne thing now. It's like, you know, when we do get to catch up once a year, 
is even last time, like uh, last year, you and I were fucking hugging, like reminiscing yeah. on old days. That was all like, last year. Oh, yeah, that's it's, nice, yeah. Then it's and we get to listen to those old mm-hmm. tunes, and every time one of those songs drops, you know, we've yeah. been talking about tunes now, and like you can see how excited we are about it. Mm. But it's like you hear those t- tunes drop, and all those memories just flood back in. Sure, like. And that's the thing for us is like we, I think we're blessed in the sense that we actually got the opportunity to live through these days. And we get to live not just through each other's fucking stories, which we're yeah. just doing now, but we also get to listen to these bass lines and songs that take us back to these stories mm. as soon as we hear them. They're yeah? bookmarks, like, man. There's certain songs that we can mention right now and we're all like, fuck, yeah? Like, and then we can tell a story off the back of it. And like, yeah. I think that we, we, you can't deny how blessed we are to be, able to be a part of that. Be a part of something that probably is never going to be emulated again. Serena. Oh, again. Black Serena. Yeah, Black Serena. Not Black Serena. Oh, oh, Sabrina. Not Sabrina, Serena. Who, what, sorry, what are you? No, no, Serena. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Black Sabrina. No, Serena. What's that one? You remember it? Well, no. since, since Kiz isn't here, the, he used to thrash, you never said. And and you bad. never said. Yeah, oh, I was thinking that to Fresh. Remember that to Fresh release? Oh, yeah, the Fresh, yeah. 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 Labanda, Labanda. We used to thrash. Yeah. Absolute bang up. Seven yeah, weeks of that. Fuck. Uh, on that, before we wrap it up, is there anything else anyone wants to talk about? Um... <laughs> I got banned from billboards after the first Mania Melbourne. <laughs> Luke's old man kicked me out. Yeah, I reckon. Well, I, I blew the system. Oh, yeah. I mean, everyone used to hate you, though. You I remember booking him. Yeah. Is there anything else? Everyone hated you. I don't nah, because he used to. Like, well, I'd book him early days, and then I wouldn't tell him how hard he played. So oh, they weren't yeah, ready yeah. for it. And he would just come in and rip their system yeah, apart. Yeah, And they'd be like, oh, we can't have that guy back. <laughs> 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 nah, lastly to say, I just think. You had a cult following. But, oh, 100% cult. But I, I, I think everything you just said comes full circle, right? In terms of community, memories, relationships, all that. Like, post COVID, I think that changed a lot of oh, relationship wise yeah. for a lot of people. It ruined it. Like, for them, it's like my brother, right? Unfortunately, I don't get to see him every week anymore. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But if we get on the phone, <laughs> always start texting. It's on again like I was with him at TV yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and, and same with yourself. Like obviously yeah. I don't get to see you every week, I don't speak to you every week, but I've seen you at a few concerts here and there. And like if we It's literally in place. Like, <laughs> it's just it's just it's just You start where you left off. Yeah. It's it, can't, it, it's not, it feels like whatever time goes in between evaporates as soon as you see each other. And I think that that's part of a beauty of what we had part of the scene. Yeah. Time and I don't know if that can be replicated. It flies. It's appreciate like you, you become like as you like I've I've gone down a different path work wise, but <clears throat> like Steph says, it's kinda like when you when you catch up or when you think about it and you go, fuck, there was some fucking Tell the dates. Crazy was, uh, unreal unreal times. And you it, it, and same thing, like you, you don't need to talk to each other on a daily basis. You see not just you boys, but anyone that we used to have Moments with when we're out or when you're playing and someone will come up to you in the street yeah. out of nowhere and be like, of that. remember this, remember that, and it's like, just, yeah, it's not always. Nice it's, yeah. it's a rush back to you, like, you see someone like, ah, hey! like, straight away you're yelling at each other, like, you might not have seen for seven years, but you're like, you're pumped to see them. Yeah, and I think it's just nice to be part of. 100%. You know? Would you wind back the clock one night if you could? Oh, oh just every one night. night. Every day, like, fucking <laughs> <like>, week, boys! <laughs> <laughs> every Saturday, really. And, and that's the thing, like, yeah. You know, you catch up with some people are the good old days. Oh, the good old days, They yeah. talk like they're, they're fucking miserable, but... Yeah. I've never been happy, to be honest. But, obviously... You've never been happy or never been happy? I've never been happy, yeah, same, yeah. But the truth is, having those memories, and just to be able to go back there, any conversation, any photo, every time you hear a song... Yeah. A lot of people don't have that. Yeah, 100%. Right? And I feel, could I go back? Of course I would. But I'm also glad that that happened when it did. Mm. And, you know, that set up a lot of things for my life now and also, you know, contributed to a lot now, so. And who we are. 100%. 100%. Best job in the world, man. If we, didn't, if we didn't do all that then, like, let's say none of this existed. Who are we now? Who the fuck were like, yeah. like, we, we, we wouldn't know. No. Yeah. We don't know if it'd be positive, we don't know if it'd be negative, but we wouldn't be who we are now. Full start, I don't care. Probably a few more brain cells. It was a journey. It was a journey back then. Oh, it was a fucking movie, man. Actual movie, hey? It was a movie. Would have had to drop 25 black and just give it away for nothing, huh? (laughs) Ah, yeah, there's that. <laughs> Wouldn't know how to sell the complimentary ticket allocations. Oh, that's it. The, the well, side yeah, deals. I mean, we could do this podcast for eight hours if you wanted to. But yeah, yeah. This so on that, I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, sorry, on that, I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, thank you, boys, for coming down. 
Adam, Vadim, and fucking Stefan. Thanks well, for It's weird calling you by your real name, Stephen. but anyway. Thanks for coming down, and I want to keep doing this. I hope to make this like a monthly or six-weekly thing, where we sort of just take a trip down memory lane and talk about the old days and, you know, the scene that was. But thank you for listening. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. Uh, follow, like, subscribe, all that shit. I feel like Logan Paul saying that, but I appreciate your time. <laughs> and Paul. we've actually got a gig coming up where we're all going to be at, uh, which is, don't know the date, but it's in August. It's made in Melbourne. So if you want to come down and relive some of these days, if they you got the same emotions that we got from talking about them today, come down and uh, relive it for one time the this nostalgia. year. Nostalgia. Nostalgia. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you, Danny. Sweet.